From Nebraska's trusted news source, this is Channel 8 News at 5. Coming up tonight on the news, a final recap of the Felipe Vasquez murder trial. Plus a potential change for SNAP benefits in Nebraska. But we begin tonight with a developing story that we have learned here at Channel 8. Good evening, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us. An area county sheriff was arrested for drunk driving. The Seward County attorney confirming that information to us. Channel 8's Alexis Gineski joins us live in studio with the latest details. Alexa. Yeah, that's right, Rod and Megan. I'm talking about Steve Julik, the, for, the Fillmore County Sheriff who was appointed to the position last year. Now here is a picture of Steve being sworn in as interim sheriff last November. The office posted it on its Facebook page. Now the Seward County t Attorney confirming that Steve was arrested for DUI early Sunday morning around 6.30 a.m. just inside of Seward County on 140th, just south of Alvo Road. Officials say he refused to take any sobriety test and was taken to the Seward County Jail where he bonded out for $500. And we talked to Steve on the phone Tuesday afternoon. He said he had no comment on his arrest and we asked him if he is still acting as Fillmore County Sheriff. He added that is still undecided. He says that very topic was discussed at the county board meeting earlier Tuesday. Now, Julik has been on the Fillmore County Sheriff's Office for 17 years. Officials official charges are against Julik are pending. A tentative court date is set for late April. He is running for election for Fillmore County Sheriff this November. Alexa, thank you very much for all those details in our top story tonight. Right now, there are about a thousand Nebraskans who can't receive SNAP benefits due to previous crimes. A new bill up for debate would allow people with previous drug distribution convictions to apply for those benefits. Channel 8's Macy Meyer has more as we cover Nebraska tonight. Macy? Senator Megan Hunt's bill has made it to the debate floor, and for people who have been in prison and turned their life around, they're hopeful it will pass. I've struggled financially. I've struggled uh, with having a healthy, healthy food on my table. I've, ha I've struggled with putting food on my table for my family. It's a burden about a thousand Nebraskans are facing on a daily basis. People who have prior convictions for drug possession, use or distribution are banned for life from food assistance in the state. To help overturn that law, which was put in place in 1996, Senator Megan Hunt has been pushing through LB 121, which would eliminate that rule. In general, the people that we talk to uh, are, are folks who are contributing to society and have served their debt to society by going to prison, finishing their probation, and anything else that they're required to do by the Department of Corrections. And now they're being denied benefits from a human services agency that is real purpose is to take care of the people of the state. Nebraska Appleseed has been a strong advocate for helping this bill get approved. For Nebraskans like Martinez, who was convicted of a drug charge in 2009 and spent three years in prison, getting rid of this ban would mean a lot. I just hope everybody understands that we all need to eat. There are some good people out there that are trying to make that happen every single day with our nonprofit organizations and to just keep on keeping an ear open, listen and understand that this is what's going on in our in our society in the state of Nebraska and these are the needs that need to be met in my opinion. Those in opposition say to be eligible, those convicted should have to go to a treatment facility to show they are recovered. The bill is scheduled for floor debate tonight, but a lot of other very big bills ahead of it, so no guarantee they will get to it today. We will be sure to keep you updated on that. All right, Macy Meyer, thank you so much for that report. We now know uh, Felipe Vasquez will be sentenced on May 25th after he was found guilty on all charges that he was facing late last night. He's been on trial for the murder of Lincoln Police Investigator Mario Herrera, and jurors didn't even need a full day of deliberations following closing arguments. Now it's your turn to tell Felipe Vasquez it's over. And you promised me that you could look upon Mr. Vasquez and proclaim him to be not guilty. You've now heard everything. And it's your duty to return a verdict that speaks the truth. The seven charges Vasquez was found guilty of include first degree murder and escape using a deadly weapon. The defense repeatedly tried to convince jurors that he never meant to shoot anyone and he was only hoping the gunshots would scare off police who had surrounded his Lincoln home back in 2020. 
Investigator Herrera died from medical complications after Vasquez shot him. And today, Lincoln Police Chief Teresa Ewens releasing a statement. She says, quote, thank you to the jury for making the right decision and finding him guilty on all counts. This is not an easy decision, but in this case, it is the right one. All right, uh, more good news uh, from today's COVID update here locally. Health officials have moved the risk dial into the green category, and we haven't been in that area since last July. These positive trends, especially the decline in the numbers of individuals hospitalized and on ventilators, they are finally providing relief to our dedicated healthcare professionals. And the number of new cases reported daily has dropped to single digits, and we have not had a death from COVID-19 since March 10th. Health Director Pat Lopez says they're keeping an eye on the BA2 subvariant. At this point, they're not sure if it will cause a surge, but just today, one case was reported in Lancaster County. That makes 18 total in Nebraska so far. Time now for our first forecast with meteorologist Rusty Dawkins. And Rusty, the rain has continued throughout the day. Very cloudy, March-like weather. Yeah, it uh, wasn't a pleasant day, but that moisture was uh, much needed in many spots. And there were some pretty big snowflakes out there every now and then, but uh, none of that really accumulated, at least in southeastern portions of the state. Temperature wise, we've started to warm up a little bit. Uh, 30s still from Omaha to Nebraska City, but 44 in the capital city and some 50s out there. I, that's still below average, but hey, after a day like today, uh, we'll take what we can get. Now the wind has not been kind. It's generally out of the north at uh, anywhere from 20 to 40 miles per hour, and that's sustained. The wind gusts are even higher than that. We've been seeing wind gusts that have been pushing to around the 50 mile per hour range. Uh, 52 in New York, 52 in Aurora, 51 in Grand Island. Look at that at Hastings, a 59 mile per hour wind gust. That uh, would trigger a severe thunderstorm warning if it were associated with a thunderstorm. But uh, 59 miles per hour, that's, that is a, a lot of wind going on out there right now. Uh, the wide scope of the satellite and radar showing it's pretty quiet. Still some lingering showers in and around the capital city towards Omaha. So if you have travel plans on I-80, you'll likely have to use the windshield wiper on and off. On Wednesday, early morning showers, maybe mixing in with a couple of snowflakes. Otherwise, just cloudy skies and another cold day and another windy day. But this should be the last of that. We are going to see temperatures rebound uh, kind of slowly, but we'll eventually get there as we head towards the weekend. More on that in just a few minutes. All right. Thank you very much, Rusty. In national news, Supreme Court nominee Judge Katanji Brown Jackson facing questioning from the Senate Judiciary Committee members today. The senators wasted no time jumping right into the tough questions. ABC's M. Wynn has the details on day two of four. A historic day as Supreme Court nominee Judge Katanji Brown Jackson takes the hot seat at her confirmation hearing. Republican Senator John Cornyn raising concerns about Judge Jackson and her representation of Guantanamo Bay detainees. Jackson seemingly taken aback. Why in the world would you call Secretary of Defense Rumsfeld and George W. Bush war criminals? in a legal filing. It seems so out of character for you. Senator, you may have been talk. Are you talking about briefs that I or habeas petitions that talk, I filed talking about when you were representing a member of the Taliban? Well, Senator, I don't remember that particular reference and uh, Senator Lindsey Graham pressing the nominee okay. about her faith. Could you fairly judge a Catholic? Senator, I have a record of I think the answer would be yes. judging I everyone. I believe you can. <laughs> I'm just asking this question because how important is your faith to you? Graham's way of calling out what he believes is a double standard. that Judge Jackson is celebrated for her faith, while former Supreme Court nominees Amy Coney Barrett and Brett Kavanaugh were not. Jackson rejected GOP accusations she soft on crime, citing the endorsement of the nation's largest law enforcement group, the Fraternal Order of Police. Jackson declaring she cares deeply about public safety. It was a contentious day for Judge Jackson, with another expected Wednesday, a fact acknowledged by California Democrat Diane Feinstein. I think you're doing very well, and as you can see, this is a bit of a tough place. Despite being confirmed three previous times by the Senate and receiving Republican support, it appears Judge Jackson's battle for bipartisanship this time will be much more challenging. On Capitol Hill, M. Wynn, ABC News. Florida's governor making headlines today. He's honoring the swimmer who finished second to the first transgender athlete to win an NCAA Division I title. He said the victory is a fraud. 
we're going to be doing a proclamation uh, saying uh, that Emma is the best female swimmer in the 500 meter freestyle because she earned that. And we need to stop allowing organizations like the NCAA to perpetuate frauds on the public. And that's exactly what they're doing. University of Pennsylvania swimmer Leah Thompson, right there, rise in women's sports has sparked criticism and debate over transgender women competing in female athletics. Still to come on the news tonight, Ukrainian forces say they retook an important suburb of the capital city of Kyiv overnight. And Russian forces continue to attack other areas near the capital. We'll have more on the situation there when we come back. Stay with us. online by visiting Fireplace Stone and Patio. Now to the latest on the war in Ukraine. The Russian attacks on civilian targets escalating with a deadly strike on Kyiv shopping mall located there. Uh, meanwhile, many other cities refusing to surrender. ABC's Raina Roy has the very latest. As Russia continues escalating its attack on Ukraine, Ukrainian forces keeping up the fight, desperately holding on to their country. Ukrainian authorities say their troops reclaimed a strategically important suburb of Kyiv, but other areas around the capital city are still under siege. This video verified by ABC shows a Russian strike on a mall in Kyiv, at least eight people killed, the deadliest attack in the capital since the war began. The city under a 35-hour curfew, with fears Russian kill teams may be in the area. In Kherson, Russian troops again fired tear gas into a crowd of residents, peacefully protesting the Russian occupation of the city. Several people injured in similar scenes on Monday. 
Satellite images show the besieged port city of Mariupol, smoke filling the sky, civilian areas bombarded by strikes, apartment buildings destroyed. Residents who are still there hiding out underground in freezing conditions. President Zelensky telling them to stay strong, saying never think even for a moment that Ukraine does not remember you. The UN reports more than 10 million have been forced from their homes, a quarter of the population. 3.5 million have left the country, half are children. President Biden says Russia has used a hypersonic missile in Ukraine. He fears Russian leader Vladimir Putin could use chemical weapons with the Russian advance stalled across the country. A senior U.S. defense official says Russian invasion forces have just below 90 percent of their combat power still intact, while the Ukrainian military has over 90 percent, pointing to weapon shipments from allied countries, which have helped bolster its defense. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Now, your storm alert team forecast from Nebraska's trusted news source. Lots of things going on today. Rain, rain, snow mix, just snow at times, uh, depended on where you were at. But the one thing that everybody had was wind. And most of it is from Columbus, Kearney, Grand Island, Hastings. This is a high wind warning. Wind gusts, we've been close to 60 mile per hour. Uh, 60 miles per hour is uh, above the severe thunderstorm warning criteria. So dangerous situation here. A lot of things can get pushed over. Uh, just keep that in mind. Uh, this ends at 7 p.m. So about another couple of hours left on that. But uh, goodness, that's a lot of a lot of wind today. Precipitation, this is since midnight, not the whole storm, but since midnight. So for today, uh, as of 12 a.m., uh, inch and a quarter in Nebraska City, just under a half an inch in Lincoln, but uh, just about everybody has been very close to an inch of precipitation for the whole storm, but since midnight, anywhere from a quarter to a half to uh, an inch and a quarter. Temperatures right now uh, pretty uniform just about everywhere you look. A lot of 40s and 50s, 38 in Nebraska City, 44 in the capital city, but uh, mild, uh, 50 degrees in Central City, 51 in Grand Island, Kearney, and 50 in Hastings, which is below average. We should be in the middle 50s, but you know, when you have a wind like this, the temperature almost doesn't matter. Uh, sustained winds, 29, 31, 33, 40 mile per hour sustained winds. That means it's blowing like that constantly, uh, and then the wind gusts, is close to 60 miles per hour in Hastings, so 59 miles per hour there, 45 in Lincoln, 44 in Beatrice, 35 in Nebraska City, and we're not alone. The entire state uh, seeing these wind gusts that are anywhere from 40 to 50 miles per hour, 55 in Scotts Bluff. Uh, so usually everything moves from west to east, and when you have wind gusts that hard uh, in central and western Nebraska, you know it's probably going to be a while before eastern Nebraska gets rid of all of this wind, and that's the case. It will, it'll still be around tomorrow, sad to say. Satellite showing, uh, satellite and radar showing just a little bit of light precipitation along Interstate 80 here from Lincoln to uh, Omaha. Zooming out, showing most of the state is cloudy, a little bit of light rain to snow showers in western Nebraska, a rain-snow mix uh, just off to our east. So things have quieted down precipitation wise, but this thing wants to kind of churn around here and come back at us from the north as we head through the day tomorrow. So by tonight around 10 p.m., I think just cloudy skies, maybe a spit of rain here and there, uh, but it won't amount to much. But notice dots showing up here and there, 7 a.m. Wednesday, a couple of snowflakes, maybe a few raindrops. Uh, it won't amount to anything, but it'll be out there. Again, a little rain snow mix possible as we head through the day uh, Wednesday afternoon. Then eventually everything kind of clears out. Cloud cover sticks strong through Thursday morning and then it finally goes fine. I'm done with Nebraska. That system moves on out to the east and we're left with partly cloudy skies as we head through the second half of the day on Thursday. How much precipitation are we looking at? It doesn't look like much as we head through Wednesday but notice all the spots. It's going to be exactly that, a spotty precipitation potential as we head through the next 24 hours. Tonight cold, uh, dropping to or just below the freezing mark. So we did get rain today. So some spots, uh, especially uh, upper elevation kind of roadways, may see some icy, uh, icy areas. So keep that in mind if you have travel plans tonight. Highs tomorrow uh, in the lower 40s, maybe the middle 40s. 30 degrees tonight, that light mix on and off throughout the first half of the day tomorrow, maybe even into the early afternoon and 45. And then your seven day forecast, we eventually get, uh, can you imagine, we've got snow uh, and then eventually seeing temperatures in the 70s as we head through uh, much of uh, past 
into early next week. So just an interesting forecast, a lot going on. Uh, hey, it's Severe Weather Awareness Week and we're talking tornado safety today. Where is the best place to be if there is a tornado headed your way? Put as many walls between you and the outside as you possibly can. That's why those areas in green are where you want to be should there be a severe storm headed your way. So a hallway, uh, interior room, but next to windows, that's a really bad place to be. All right, Rusty, thank you very much. And speaking of Severe Weather Awareness Week, um, some parts of Texas and Oklahoma getting hit hard. Yeah, several tornadoes touched down, including one near Austin. Check out this video. In Texas, as a tornado crosses the road, transformers igniting, a pickup truck knocked on its side as debris rains down. The truck spinning across the road, then knocked right side up. And moments later, miraculously, the truck driver drives off. That's a story to tell. <laughs> At least 19 tornadoes were reported in Texas in some locations, though, leaving a two mile trail of devastation. The storms pulled down power lines and destroyed dozens of buildings, businesses, schools and homes. As the massive cleanup effort continues across the state, the governor accounting more resources for the recovery. This disaster declaration will help Jack County, but also help counties across the entire state of Texas more rapidly respond to and recover from this horrific disaster uh, that struck their community. Millions more are now bracing for this storm system to move through as it goes through Louisiana, Mississippi and Alabama. It was a positive day on Wall Street. The Dow gaining 254 points and NASDAQ up 270. Here are your numbers. You're watching Channel 8, Nebraska's trusted news source. Tonight, the questions asked and key to A harrowing near miss uh, for a five-year-old narrowly 
dodging a bouncy house that was sent fly, uh, flying high by winds. Here's tonight's take a look at this. A North Carolina couple is reeling, thankful that their little ones are okay after a security camera captured high winds sending a birthday bouncy house airborne, nearly striking their five-year-old son. The boy escaped unharmed, and thankfully no one was inside the bounding bouncy house, but you can see the parents' frantic reaction following the incident. Are they in here? Y'all in there? The couple says the company that set up the house did stake it to the ground. One of those stakes ended up on the roof. The company also warned against use in windy conditions, but the couple says the gargantuan gusts came out of nowhere on an otherwise clear and sunny day. They're now sharing the video as a cautionary tale for other parents. Just pay attention to the wind because even though we thought we were going to be okay in the blink of an eye, we could have done some damage. Over in Pittsburgh, a bridal party was blown away, metaphorically speaking, when superstar Tom Hanks lent a dose of star power to some group photos. Wedding photographer Rachel Rowland says the bride was about to hop into a limo when Hanks, in town shooting a movie, walked up and asked to take a photo with her. A few shots later and the bride's special day was made that much more memorable by a fortuitous Forrest Gumpian photobomber. For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Roth. You know, Rod Fowler crashed my wedding. That's true. That's true. I made funny faces and everything. Right? It was great. <laughs> Let's get an update on the weather. Uh, rain pretty much done, Rusty? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, measurable anyway. We still may see some light sprinkles and uh, maybe a few snowflakes through early tomorrow morning, uh, but it won't amount to much. It's that wind that's really going to be a pain. Temperatures in the 40s and 50s for a while, 60s and 70s by the weekend. All right. Thank you, Rusty. And thank you all for being here. World News is next. See you back here at 6. With the Channel 8 Eyewitness News mobile app, you'll be the first to know. Get alerts about breaking news and weather, all in the palm of your hand. The spas are here. Truckloads of spas arriving weekly. Hurry in today. These spas are going fast. Spas are in stock and ready for immediate delivery. Closed captioning on Channel 8 Eyewitness News is brought to you by Christensen Hearing Analytics. What keeps me working at Aloe are the people.